a minute of silence in Burundi's constitutional court for the late president Pierre Nkurunziza. The government announced his death on Tuesday. That left the question of who takes over. The constitution says the speaker of the National Assembly should then become an interim leader. There is no need for an interim president, as the newly elected president can start his term a day after being sworn in, according to Article 104 of the Constitution. For this reason, the court has decided that it is right for President-elect Everest Indeya Shimiye to take the oath as soon as possible. Everest Indeya Shimiye was announced the winner of elections held last month, which were marred by reports of violence and irregularities. He was due to take over from Unkar and Ziza in August. Unkar and Ziza had ruled Burundi for 15 years. His rule started peacefully, but ended with widespread reports of political killings and torture. Five years ago, there were weeks of protests when he announced his decision to run for a third term. Political opposition said it was against the constitution. Many of them, along with activists and journalists, since fled into exile. Now, nobody openly criticizes the government on the street. The president has worked hard, and now we've got his replacement, Everest Indai Shimiye, whom we trust will work for Burundians and Burundi. The government said Unkar Nziza died of a heart attack. Many suspect he died of COVID-19. He had no policies to slow the spread of the virus. He told Burundians that God would protect them from it. Thousands gathered at election rallies last month. After his sudden death, ministers met on Thursday to discuss what happens next. They said it was the constitutional court to decide. And it's the same court that five years ago was forced by Unkar and Ziza to rule that he could run for the third term according to one of its judges who fled into exile. Rights groups say none of Burundi's institutions function independently. After 15 years of Unkar and Ziza's rule, he may be gone, but Burundi's future is still fragile. Malcolm Webb, Al Jazeera.